Hi, everyone, and thank you for being here this evening. My name is Colette Sims. I'm the Director of Enrollment at Foothill Country Day School, and this is part of our evening panel series. So over the last few months, we've been meeting different constituents of our community. We've met teachers, we've met um, parents and students, and now I'm so excited to have our kindergarten through second grade team here tonight to tell you all about their program. They've been teaching a full day and logged on to Zoom tonight specifically to talk Talk to you, so we're so grateful that they've made the time. I just wanted to mention again that this is part of Foothill's Thursday evening panel series. If you missed any of our prior panels and you're interested in hearing them, they are located on our YouTube page. You may be there right now if you're watching the recording. And if you're live, then we're really excited that you were able to join us tonight. So a little bit about what this evening is gonna look like. Right now, we're gonna overview the session, and then we're gonna hear a little bit about our kindergarten through second grade division from Dr. Lisa Olsh, who's our director of lower school. At Foothill, our lower school is composed of kindergarten through fifth grade. And after that, we're gonna hear from our teachers. We have two classes in each grade. So we'll be hearing from each of the homeroom teachers. And after we'll also be hearing from our Dean of Lower School and our literacy specialist as well. If you have questions, we most likely have answers. So you're welcome to put them in the chat box. Uh, we have our Director of Marketing and Communications on the call, Anne Henry, and she will be helping with the chat box. So we'd love to hear your questions. You can put them in during the presentation presentation or save them till the end, but you know, we always want to um, help answer what you're thinking about most. So you can ask the questions of, of the administrators or the teachers on the call today. And with that, I am going to in virtually invite Dr. Ulsh to tell us a little bit more about the division. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Sims, and welcome to all of our prospective families. We're so pleased you joined us tonight. Well, the K-2 years, as you, um, you probably know, are such um, important and fun years for you and your um, children. Um, and we take those years um, very seriously, but with a very lighthearted and, um, and a very happy approach at Foothill. Uh, the program is a combination of homeroom subjects, foundational skills in literacy and math in the homeroom, um, as well as a wonderful offering of specialist classes, uh, including art, library, music, PE, science, Spanish, um, and that's it. As the kids get a little bit older, they have a technology um, elective put in as well. Um, but every day in these lower grades is, um, is joyous. Um, from my office, uh, which is sort of a treehouse view of the lower campus. I see kindergartners, first graders, second graders passing by and they are skipping and hopping and following their teachers with glee, both to and from classrooms um, and, uh, and the playground and lunch and recess as well. Um, as you can see, we, um, I, I believe you know, we have two classes at each grade level. So um, basically two equal groups in two different rooms with teachers who team and coordinate with each other, um, which is a very nice configuration. Um, lots of added capacity with teachers having a partner um, and an instructional aide, each of them to help them work with students. Um, we know that it's not all about academics in these younger years. It's a lot of it is about growing a young person's sense of self, taking care of them socially, emotionally, um, allowing them enough time to play. And we spend um, a good deal of time and effort on that. We use Responsive Classroom as our classroom management system. Um, it's very child-centered, gives the kids a lot of voice and choice um, and, uh, and honors their feelings as we are, are helping shape them into being uh, good students, good friends, and, um, and generally kind young people. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time. I want to leave plenty of time for our teachers to tell you about their specific grades. So I'm going to hand it back to Ms. Sims and happy to answer questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so with that, our entry grade into our kindergarten through eighth grade program is kindergarten. And so with that, I'd like to introduce our first uh, homeroom kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Adam. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Naomi Adam, and let me just add my welcome uh, to those you heard from Miss Sims and from Dr. Olsh. Um, I am teaching kindergarten at Foothill right now, and I have been teaching for 20 years now, and almost half of that time has been at Foothill in first grade and now in kindergarten. Um, one of the things that I love about teaching at Foothill is that we really do nurture the whole child. We work on uh, building them up, not only academically, but emotionally supporting them as they're just learning about what it means to be a friend, what it means to be a student, um, supporting them in all of those ways. Uh, their social and emotional development is just as important to us as their academic development. Um, one thing that is uh, special in kindergarten is that uh, we understand that play is very important for this age. So we really work to incorporate hands-on games, being active and playful into our lessons. Um, some of the pictures here are just from the last few weeks of school. Um, you can see uh, some students sitting with some, some cards on their table and they worked collaboratively to build some sentences using picture cards and uh, sight words that they had learned. Um, another picture is of a student sorting uh, conversation candy hearts on Valentine's Day. So we sorted by color and we graphed and we compared um, greater than, less than, equal to. Uh, and then the uh, third picture there is uh, CVC or consonant vowel consonant uh, words that we are working on sounding out and reading and we played hopscotch. So we put words in different word families on each of the hopscotches and we had originally intended that to be an outside activity, but as you know, we've had lots of rain this year. So uh, we quickly shifted gears and um, made our own hopscotch and the kids had a great time being active on a rainy day and sounding out words. So um, that's just a little bit about our, our grade. And of course, uh, we'll be happy to answer questions at the end. So thankful that you're here tonight. Thank you. And we have our second homeroom teacher, Mrs. Hamill. Hi, my name is Sharon Hamill, and I really am glad that you're here tonight. And I am in my 11th year here at Foothill and truly honored to be a part of this community. And I don't say that lightly, it really is a community. I come to school and I'm so excited to be with the children and learn from them and have fun with them. And I'm also excited to be with my coworkers because they become true friends. So I really am um, happy to be a part of all this. And in these pictures, this is a theme we do at the beginning of the year. It is called All About Me, and it's a long unit, and we learn about ourselves, and we learn about each other, about our similarities and our differences, um, what's unique about us, what's special about us, um, what might be strengths and what meet, might be challenges, uh, things they like and dislike. Um, so it's just a beautiful unit about ourselves, and we also um, learn about each other's families. And in these pictures, they have their little, I call them mini me's. Um, and they create little miniature versions of themselves. And they're very proud of them at the end. And my favorite part of is that they create their own skin color. So they get um, lots of different paints and they can mix them together and they compare it to their own skin and see which one is the closest. So they learn a lot about diversity and how beautiful we all are. And then on the other side where they're holding up food, it's a similar thing. They get to go up and we have lots of different kinds of food, anything from like chocolate to as you see hot cocoa, to I'm not sure if that's applesauce. And then they get to compare their skin to um, different foods and decide which one is the closest again to their skin color and then they write about it. So it's a very special unit getting to know about ourselves and accepting ourselves and accepting others. Great, thank you so much for sharing that. And so after kindergarten comes first grade. And so with that, I'd like to introduce our first grade homeroom teacher, Mrs. Bone. Hi everybody, welcome uh, to our evening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, my name is Bonnie Bone and I've been a first grade teacher at Foothill for 14 years. It's the entirety of my teaching career. And uh, I love my little first grade home. Um, we have so much fun in first grade. I think I, my teaching partner and I have, have discussed our overarching theme. Uh, and basically what we want to instill in first grade is just a joy and a love for learning. And uh, with that, specifically in language arts, uh, we have a lot of fun ways to engage them in reading. Uh, we have a little mascot that, uh, helps us through our language arts program, little Rashid the lion, that um, is always up to tricks and really engages the kids in uh, being more immersed in the English language. 
and uh, we like to instill a love of math by teaching to several learning different different learning modalities. Um, and we like to really instill uh, the knowledge and the realization that we are all similar and yet we are all different. And we love to celebrate those uh, similarities and differences in a variety of ways. Uh, one of the pictures that you see at the bottom was our celebration of the Lunar New Year. And um, so we spend a lot of time during social studies time talking about various holidays and um, and how who celebrates and why they celebrate and how they celebrate. Um, and the top picture, you see the kids have been so proud of themselves uh, producing writing, uh, producing writing in various genres. I believe that this one was a nonfiction genre uh, that we that we did earlier in the year. And um, that third picture where the, the students are, uh, they're holding solid shape nets, which are um, paper folded into the shapes of geometric solid shapes. Um, it just shows that uh, creativity uh, and art can come in math, it can happen in social studies, it can happen anywhere. And uh, all of that culminates in just a joy for coming to school every day, for seeing our friends, and for learning. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm happy to introduce Mrs. Bones, teaching homeroom, homeroom teaching partner, Mrs. Ruta Metkin. Oh, hi, everybody. And thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I wanted to just give you a rundown a little bit about what these joyous pictures are showing you. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Carrie Ruta Metkin, and I've been at Foothill for nine years um, and been teaching for well over 20 in every uh, grade level. But my my dream grade has always been first grade. And I truly feel like it is my home as well. And uh, Bonnie and I have uh, every year make a little family for ourselves and for our kids. And um, it's first grade is really fun because it's really a time of of exploring their individuality, but then also knowing that they are a part of a team. And I love these two pictures that um, show how close we really do become, especially at this point of the year. Um, the first one is uh, for Spirit Week and all the grade levels have different colors dedicated for their grade. So it really shows a lot of pride and not only uh, Foothill pride, but their, their pride for their grade that they're in that year. Um, and of course, anytime we can be goofy and silly, we take a full advantage of that. Um, and then the uh, picture below is uh, something that we just did uh, a few days ago, and that was celebrate the 100th day of school. And it's funny how um, after kids get a little bit older, third, fourth grade even, they forget about the 100th day of school. It's not really important anymore. They want the last day of school. <laughs> but our kids really work hard um, earning their 100th day of school smarter uh, trophy, if you will, because they really have worked hard and they've come so far. The growth um, every year is, is, is so uh, remarkable. But really in first grade, you, you, see, you see quite a difference very, very early on. Um, and this other picture right here is uh, these two darling girls and a huge part of our program is becoming a reading coach. And not only are they learning to read, but they are learning to be empowered uh, to be able to teach their friends, their peers. And how empowering it is to watch them teach something. And when, when you can teach something, you know you're really good at it. And it's really fun to watch their confidence grow throughout the year. And just to watch them really fall into books and fall into the storyline and the plot and the setting. So they're not working so hard to read and decode anymore. They are still working on those things, but they are enjoying what they are reading. 
And now we're starting to see them read for understanding. And it's really where all the hard work pays off. And they're starting to really put forth their voice and choice within the books that they want to choose to read. And that's where you get that lifelong learning experience is in these early grades. And it's just really fun to be a part of that. Again, first grade is, is, um, is kind of magical. I'm biased, of course. Um, but uh, we hope that we get to see you um, on campus and uh, have you come by and see, see the magic, see the energy for yourself. And, and thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much. And with that, we're gonna to transition to second grade. So the oldest of our youngest cohort on the foothill side of campus. And with that, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Martinez. Hello and good evening. And thank you so much for joining us. I completely agree with all of my colleagues that have uh, spoken before. Uh, we do, I do appreciate the community that I work in. Uh, I've been working at Foothill for almost 19 years and I had 10 years of teaching experience before that. Uh, but Foothill is definitely my favorite. <laughs> and I even taught my sons uh, they went through Foothill, and that was in like the early 2000s. So I've had a lot of time uh, there at, the, at, the, at this wonderful school. Uh, in second grade, we have an overarching essential question, and it deals with where do we come from in the history of the entire world? We're getting questions like, how did the universe begin and things like that now because of our overarching essential question. Uh, where are we now and where are we going? Where are we headed in the future? Uh, so we strive to, to tie our projects into this question uh, through social studies, uh, social emotional learning and all the other subjects. Uh, we do all of the things that were mentioned as far as uh, writing workshop, writing books, um, reading workshop, where they do have a voice and choice, just like it was already said, uh, and they're growing that much more in second grade, uh, really taking charge and amping up their reading power. Um, so to the pictures here, the communities we call home picture is about our zoom in, zoom out project from social studies that was kind of like the microcosm of our own neighborhood to the macrocosm of our earth. So the students enjoyed this project because they thought about themselves and their ties to their homes, their cities, their counties, states, the country and the whole world. Um, so we also emphasize in the bottom picture here, uh, we also emphasize social emotional learning and we use the responsive classroom approach as Dr. Ulsh mentioned, and we use that and we have morning meetings and closing meetings every day. And the students generally can check in on most days. How are they doing from a scale of one to five? Tell us about what their day is like. Um, this helps us to know how they're doing and how we can work with them for that day. And it also tells them that we do care about how they're feeling and what's going on with them. And that really creates a good sense of strong community in our within our classrooms. Um, and then the bigger picture, we are on a field trip. We went to uh, visit the Raymond M. Alf Museum of Paleontology at the Webb Schools right here in Claremont. And we learned about the history of the earth, how life began and the four eras of geological time, including the Mesozoic era, which is the time of the dinosaurs. And many students really enjoy that. And we base a lot of our, uh, our learning and our focus on what have, what have they left behind? How can we tell that, that that's a fossil? All those types of things. So that all adds into our essential question. Um, but again, I think that everything that's been said is very true. When you see how everything comes together in the cohesive communities that we create in our classrooms, uh, you will see what we're talking about, that this really is a special place. And uh, I really do feel like it's my second home. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for sharing. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Martinez's teaching partner, Mr. Williams. Hello, thank you. Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Ian Williams and I am the other second grade teacher. Um, unlike most of my colleagues who you've heard from already, I am actually very new to Foothill. Um, I believe I'm the newest uh, faculty member uh, on this call right now. Um, so this is my first year at Foothill. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I was drawn to Foothill. And um, I was initially drawn to Foothill because of its um, commitment to integrity and academic excellence, but also um, because of its mission to really maintain a safe and nurturing and truly inclusive community. And I was looking for um, a home uh, that would really foster inclusivity. Um, and I'm happy that I found that in Foothill. I'm, I'm really happy I made the decision to join the team at Foothill and uh, to be working alongside these passionate and amazing and compassionate colleagues here who you've uh, met tonight. Um, and just to kind of continue what Mrs. Martinez was saying about our second grade essential question, um, as we continue to think about that theme, um, that second grade theme this year, we've really been able to link a number of school-wide events to this essential question, not only events and, and projects that we're doing in the classroom, but school-wide events. And that question again, where do we come from? Where are we now? And where are we going? So. For example, uh, for Grandparents and Family Friends Day that the school celebrated in November, um, we talked a lot about culture, about tradition, about heritage, and we discovered and we celebrated our many, many diverse backgrounds that we have here in second grade. And uh, when our grandparents and our special family friends came to visit campus, the students got to ask them questions about their past, um, they got to work together and create uh, an artistic representation of um, their very own heritage tree. And it was very cool. These trees were um, collages. The, the leaves were made out of conjoined uh, hand prints that represented um, the hands of, you know, the, the one generation, the older generation, their grandparents, and then the kids themselves. So on the pictures, you can see that uh, one picture of a child working with her grandmother, and then an example of one of the uh, projects that was produced that says strong roots make beautiful leaves. Um, more recently for the 100th day of school that uh, Mrs. Rudimetkin mentioned, um, in the second grade, we used that opportunity to talk about the number 100 to really explore what our lives might have been like, might have been like 100 years ago for the kids um, and how that compares to where they are now today. And then we took um, some time, which was really, really fun to talk about what their future might look like 100 years from now. So it was really kind of looking backwards comparing it to where we are and then the, giving them the opportunity to get creative and, and look forward and, and what 100 years means and where we might be. So um, developmentally, you know, at this age, as students are beginning to take note of and, and really understand more about the world around them um, and their communities, uh, we in second grade are really focusing on communities, on citizenship and really on deeper critical thinking skills. Um, not only across the academic areas, but also socially and emotionally as well as Mrs. Martinez uh, discussed. So that's second grade for you. Thank you so much. Um, it's just so insightful listening to all of you talk about the amazing things happening in your classroom. And so Foothill, I would like to say also really invests not only in our teachers, but also um, local administrators to support our teachers. And we're very fortunate to have a few of them on the call today. So I'd like to invite Mrs. Opal, our Dean of, uh, our Dean of Students in the lower school to speak a bit with you. Thank you, Ms. Sims. Good evening. Thank you for being here. My name is Callie Opal, and this is my eighth year at Foothill and 13th year in education. I had to go back and count there because <laughs> I couldn't quite remember. Um, my role this year is the lower school dean of students. As I explained to the students um, 
my I kind of <clears throat> summarize the word dean to mean helper. And so I'm a student helper and I help students with um, a variety of things. I help them with learning support. So if we have any students who have unique learning needs, I'm, I kind of work behind the scenes with families and with teachers to make sure that those needs are supported in the classroom. I also um, help support behavior and discipline and, um, you know, when things, when teachers need a little support in that area or students need a little extra support in that area, I can step in with some of those issues. And then I also work as the math coordinator. And what that means is that behind the scenes, I get the honor and the privilege of working alongside these amazing educators in planning and um, the, planning the curriculum and the instruction um, that they so artfully deliver day in and day out to our students. Um, I also work with the students in a small group setting, um, typically students who need a little extra support or if time permits, perhaps a little extra challenge. That's what you can see in the pictures here. I'm working with a small group of fourth graders. Um, and it, in our math curriculum is we follow a textbook called Math and Focus, but it is a Singapore math-based curriculum. And there's two philosophies in that curriculum that really guide everything that we do at Foothill when we when we teach math. It is um, a concrete pictorial abstract progression. So anytime we teach something new, we start with hands-on materials. That would be the concrete. That could be unifix cubes or base 10 blocks or erasers. Um, third grade uses erasers a lot. And then um, in um, and then the pictorial, so we're learning, learning about the same concept, but in a picture, looking at a picture. So if it were addition, maybe we would start by adding some unifix cubes together, and then we would look at a picture of maybe two apples and three apples and figure out what that is. And then we move to the abstract. That's when we introduce the plus sign and the equal sign and, and the actual digits. And that philosophy spirals all the way through up to fifth grade. And um, of course, by the time they get there developmentally they're more ready to move to the abstract quicker um, but then the other philosophy that really guides our curriculum is this is the idea of why before how so we spend a lot of time making sure that students understand why something works in math before we teach them how to do it we really avoid rote and procedural instruction and and really focus on a learning experience and discussion, discussion, discussion. Um, so you can see um, in that picture, there's, you know, they're working a little bit and then we're also talking a little bit. Those are fourth graders. So they were ready for some more abstract work with the paper and pencil. When I have my kindergartners and my first graders, I usually always come or with supplies. Um, on the 100th day of school, I had some first graders and we used our base 10 blocks and counted out 100 using ones, using tens, using hundreds. Um, we, I'll use, um, I, what did I, I use something else with first grade the other day. So with the younger kids, I always try to make sure um, I used money, real money the other day with second grade. They were pretty excited about that. Um, so with the little ones, I'm always trying to bring in those hands-on materials. It just keeps them more engaged and it makes math a tangible um, topic, which that is something that um, our teachers also do day in and day out, which is on a whole different scale with classrooms full of 20 students and desks full of math materials. But um, as I'm sure you can tell, they do it with grace and poise and creativity. And um, I think I heard the word magical and um, I can't say that enough. These grades really are magical. Foothill is a really special place and um, it's largely because of the teachers that you see here tonight. Thank you so much for that, Mrs. Opal. And in addition to Mrs. Opal in the lower school, we also have a lower school literacy specialist, Mrs. House. So I'd like to invite her to speak. Hi, good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging in there. Um, I am the literacy specialist, Mrs. House at Foothill, and I am 
super privileged to get to know um, all the children between kindergarten and second grade. Um, as you have heard already, there is so much growth that is happening in these years. Um, as a matter of fact, these years are really pivotal for building a foundation um, for the rest of their lives in many ways um, that they continue building on through the upper grades and then through middle school, um, a foundation in literacy and reading. And as you have heard, uh, there are two things that come to mind that um, all the teachers and myself, I think, excel at here at Foothill. And the first is really developing a passion for reading and for writing. Um, I think from the very beginning, when students step into uh, kindergarten, they are read to and over time uh, read with one another and with their teacher and through the years um, grow increasingly independent. Um, so that is definitely one thing, um, you know, which is sharing our passion for learning um, about literature and loving to read. And the other part of that is really helping children develop that independence over time and giving them the tools that they need in their uh, backpack, if you will. Um, and this starts in kindergarten. So um, much like Mrs. Opal, I'm um, one of my favorite things, I like to say, um, really the peanut butter and jelly of my day, if you will, is working with the students. And um, so you can see from the pictures, um, I do work with uh, groups of students, um, teachers and I and Dr. Ulsh get together and um, use some powerful tools and decide who needs some help in small group. And um, so the pictures in front of you are um, first one is in kindergarten, for example. So to give you an idea of some skills that we work on, um, in addition to reading full color books always that are fun and engaging, is in kindergarten, we start with the letters themselves and the sounds that they make and the correlation. Um, we help develop and strengthen, if you will, the correlation between the words on the page and the student. And I think it's really about bringing the books to life for children um, in a way that they can engage um, and get excited about. And this uh, continues through first grade. And in first grade, um, I feel like the wor world of reading explodes and that's where the magic really happens. Um, children uh, learn that there are many, so many words out there um, as they come to understand about sneaky E and digraphs and vowel teams. And of course the teachers um, in front of you all do an amazing job um, introducing concepts and these concepts about reading um, in, the, in the grade. And I help support that uh, in small group as well. And in second grade, uh, there's definitely a developing complexity um, as readers where um, the books that they're reading uh, can be early chapter and the concepts are, uh, you know, also involved with what the teachers were saying on the call about their world and the world around them. So um, children really start reading um, and uh, elaborating on their own interests and are reading to learn about the world around them. And with that, there's um, again, a growing complexity. So um, I am privileged to work uh, with this amazing team and uh, support the students and work hard to communicate with the families about children's growth and progress and support um, you as much as possible. So if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Great, thank you so much. And I'm happy that Mrs. House said that because if any of our parents on this call or watching this video are interested in connecting with our teachers, you're welcome to email us so we can put you in touch with them via email or schedule a phone call because we know um, that parents wanna hear from us. So we're happy to connect with you and are very responsive. And so with that, we ha do have time, just a couple minutes for questions. And so with that, I I am going to stop sharing my screen with the PowerPoint, and I'm going to invite Anne Henry, our Director of Marketing, onto our virtual platform stage to just get to the questions that you may have asked in the chat box. And if you're thinking of any, you're welcome to put them there right now. Again, we just have a couple minutes for questions, and we'd love to hear from you. And do you have a, a couple questions that families have been asking? I do. I can start with a couple. And again, if you have questions that you'd like to um, have us answer, please put them in the chat right now while we answer these first couple so that we can be timely. Um, our very first question is how, this is probably, probably going to be answered by Dr. Olsh, I think. 
Um, how often do students in these grades have arts, science, Spanish, and music, and do they have different teachers for those, or are they the same homeroom teachers? Huh. Wonderful question. Um, it varies depending on the grade they're in. Uh, there are uh, a number of specials uh, that we need to fit into any given week, but uh, in general, in the youngest grade, kindergarten, they have their specials roughly once a week. As they get a little bit older, uh, those increase to a couple of times a week. They do have many teachers, um, and this is one of the most interesting things, especially about the kindergarten experience. Um, they have a different teacher for all of the specials I listed at the beginning of, of, this, uh, of this presentation. So um, in addition to their homeroom teacher and the instructional assistant who's in their homeroom, they do have an art teacher, a PE teacher, um, the librarian and uh, uh, friends who work in the library to help, uh, science teacher, um, a Spanish teacher who comes to their room. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's one of the most exciting things about the, um, about the experience as a, as a young uh, student at, at Foothill. Uh, your world is big. It suddenly is wonderful and very big with very interesting and um, uh, special teachers who, um, who bring, I think the kids consider them uh, fun classes um, to them in addition to the fun they're having learning in the homeroom, so yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question in the chat box that I think might be Mrs. Opal's question, but if anybody else has a, has a thought, the question is, can you tell us a bit more about how your curriculum compares to the Common Core curriculum? Sure. Um, so our curriculum is, it's a standard publisher curriculum. So it has the stamp on it that says that it is a Common Core aligned curriculum. Um, I will say that, so there are lessons in there that would correlate with the Common Core standards. I would say that generally we, we cover all of the Common Core standards um, for math and um, it might be controversial, but I actually think that the math Common Core standards are actually pretty good. Um, so that's my own opinion, but I, I've done a lot of time, I spent a lot of time looking at them and I, I think that they are developmentally appropriate. I think um, the, the difference I suppose at Foothill would be our instructional approach when it comes to um, the curriculum. Like I said, we really take a lot of time to make sure that our students really understand why they're doing what they're doing. And that and we teach them the steps and um, we want them to be able to explain what they're doing and we want them to be able to think creatively and in different ways. So we often will spend time talking about different ways that they could solve the problem, even though we all get to the same answer. We're much less concerned about the right answer and more focused on the process. So. I would say that when, you know, it's, we don't talk about the Common Core much at Foothill. We are much more focused on the learning process and, um, and making sure that our students are getting a really strong algebraic foundation. That's our main overarching goal um, in the lower school. And, um, you know, I, I work in conjunction with the upper school at Foothill and we are constantly talking and collaborate, collaborating and making sure that the students that we're sending up to upper school are prepared for them and then they work to prepare those students for the for to launch out of our little foothill nest into into high school and all in all I feel our students are really well prepared and again our focus is an algebraic foundation there's just a lot of research to show that if students gain that strong algebraic foundation when they're in the lower grades that it it helps them to be a much more flexible mathematician as they get older thank you Okay, I have a question that relates to how long you all have been teaching, um, because as we heard, wow, the, <laughs> the amount of experience that you all have. The question is, um, what do you believe is the one thing that students learn at Foothill that, that they carry on to high school? So those of you who have been here for quite some time have been around long enough to see some of your students go to high school. Um, maybe we can do that very quickly with just a couple people want to speak up and throw out a sentence or two so we can get a couple ideas in. Colleen? Did you say something that yeah. they learned? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that the critical thinking skills is 
is a very important aspect of how the curriculum is taught at Foothill. And noticing and uh, cherishing, highlighting, encouraging the out of the box type thinkers uh, also is, is very important. I see a lot of the students finish Foothill and go. a lot of them will go on to the web schools. And I hear about that because that's another very close uh, tie for, my, for me. My sons went there and my husband works there and he will tell me, you know, okay, it's here, I went to this program tonight and there was a panel of, you know, students and all led by Foothill students that graduated from Foothill. They're at, they're at Web now and they're leading. So it just becomes this, you know, the leadership, the critical thinking, the innovative, you know, emphasis is very, very important at Foothill. Mrs. Hamill, did you want to say something? I was just going to say to go along with that. I think public speaking is something that I'm just so impressed. Even in kindergarten, we do it really subtly. You know, even if just participating, like you said, in morning meeting and closing circle, and then in writing workshop, sometimes we, they read aloud what they've written. And um, in years past, we've done, you know, nursery rhymes where they go up on stage and, and recite those. And then the end of the year, the play. So just public speaking to be so brave at that age. I admire that so much because I still am not there. And then, like you said, in high school, you see um, theater. They, they join theater. They join speech and debate. So I just think that's such a gift. Mrs. Bone. Um, I would like to just point out that at Foothill, we really promote a sense of resiliency. Um, that sometimes that learning is amazing and learning is fun, but sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's challenging and sometimes you, you don't succeed the very first time. But when you can keep trying and then succeed, that's when you become a, a resilient learner. And that's when uh, challenges and ambition really come through when you've, when you've shown yourself that you can overcome a challenge and, um, and succeed. Great, okay, I have a really quick one that kind of relates to that, Mrs. Bone. So thanks for that lead in. Um, <laughs> the question is, um, do children that join after first grade, um, when do we introduce foreign language and the children that join a little bit later, how, how do we manage that? How do they, do they get to access foreign language with their cohort or do we have to do something else with them? I just know that for, for first graders, um, the, the introduction to Spanish, which is our foreign language um, at the school, the introduction to Spanish is mostly in for kindergarten and first grade, um, a variety of songs and games and fun that is a very introductory level. Um, perhaps Mrs. Martinez can speak to what happens um, with the older students, but uh, I've, I've only seen uh, first graders who did not attend the Foothill prior. Uh, they just didn't, they just join in and have fun. Again, there's that resiliency. Kids are amazing. They can just pick it up and enjoy uh, just because it's fun. Great. great. Um, okay, we have um, Mr. Silva, who is our head of school, has joined us on the call. Um, so if um, I think that he would like to say something to everyone. Hello, Mr. Silva. Hi, Ms. Henry, thank you. And thank you to this esteemed group of, of teachers. This is really uh, after preschool. This is where it starts kindergarten to second grade. And, and I just want to thank you all for being on here uh, after a full day of working hard to help our students uh, be the best students they can be and also the best people they can be. And I just want to welcome all of uh, all of our prospective parents on the call. This is uh, we, we know and don't take for granted uh, uh, how how uh, difficult uh, in some cases this decision can be to send your child to, to private school. Uh, but uh, you know, in the case of Foothill, we're, we're going on 70 years in Claremont, uh, 70 years of uh, just a fantastic outcomes for, for our students. And I think as was spoken to or alluded to, uh, you know, we, our, our intention is, is for our kids uh, to uh, work hard, uh, learn to be good kids, and also be prepared uh, for uh, their next stage, which is of course for us high school, be prepared to be successful wherever they go to high school, public, or private, and uh, all of the uh, private high school school decisions are coming out tomorrow, and uh, we have early indications that again, 
uh, Foothills eighth graders uh, are, are going to, uh, in terms for those who apply to private high schools, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the best high schools and most competitive high schools uh, in the state, locally and, uh, and nationally. And uh, we know that our students who are headed off to the public schools, we have very fine public schools in this area and, uh, and around the region, uh, we, we know that they're going to distinguish themselves there as well. And it won't be long, parents, before you are considering where you would like your child to go to high school. So uh, it's a journey. It starts with kindergarten, of course, and uh, we're just glad that you're on the call tonight with us. Well, thank you so much. I think that's such a great way. I mean, they say you blink and eighth grade is here. Um, and quite a few people on this call can attest to that. So we appreciate you taking time this Thursday um, as part of our Thursday evening panel series to meet our administrators and our amazing K2 teachers. Again, if you'd like to connect with anyone on this call, don't hesitate to contact admissions and we can connect to you via phone or email. We look forward to giving you a tour of campus soon. Take care, everyone, and have a great night.